Hello everyone, uh, Jay from Styling Cycles here. Today we're going to talk about pedal kickback. Kind of what is pedal kickback, what I think pedal kickback is and, and how we can solve it or do we need to solve it. So pedal kickback is something that's talked about a lot at the moment. People think that you can feel pedal kickback in your feet as you ride, that it blows your feet off in certain circumstances, is something we need to solve. I've got my bike here, this is my personal Mega Murma, and I'm just gonna give a quick demonstration of what pedal kickback is, and what I think the consequences of it are. So I've removed my shock, just so we can uh, cycle the suspension easily, and I'll show you, but I'll move it into a, a low gear first. <laughs> so, in the smallest gear, what, what we can see is, if we, as we cycle the suspension, ever so slightly, you can see the crank moves. So we'll stick it in a big gear now and do, do the same thing to see what effect that has. Let's cycle it again. And you can see it moves a lot more this time. I suppose the other thing to look at is if we look at the, the rear derailleur as we move it. And you can see you know, the, the, derailleur is, the derailleur is moving as we cycle the suspension. Okay, so what's going on here? So the effective distance between the bottom bracket and the rear axle is getting longer as the suspension moves. So as we cycle it, that's getting longer. Because that dimension is getting longer, um, the chain has to get longer to accommodate it. So as you cycle your suspension, chain gets longer. We see that in kind of two ways. The, the clutch or the derailleur hanger has to move a bit to, to accommodate that stretch and the cranks move a little bit as the chain rotates around. So you can imagine because the pivot is up here as we move that way it's pulling that away from the from that center point there. So overall the length of the chain is getting longer. So I think there's kind of a couple of things going on here. We, for, for us to feel this in our feet we need something to be transmitting forces. We know the chain moves, we know the cranks move, but are they transmitting any forces? So the first thing to think about is the lower part of the chain, because that's easy. In the bottom part of the chain, the hanger of the derailleur can move, and that accommodates, the, that accommodates the movement. In the top part, there's nothing to accommodate the movement. So what people think is there's no way of accommodating it, therefore it has to put tension in that chain because it's growing, because it's getting longer, it's getting stretched. And it's that tension in that chain which moves the cranks, which you then feel in your feet. But there's kind of a, I don't know, it's not, there's, there's some errors in this. Um, the lower part of the chain we've seen has got, the, has got the, um, the derailleur. So it can move freely. Although there's a little bit of clutch tension in there, those forces aren't big enough to feel in your feet or they're small. The top part of the chain, and this is, this is kind of the big thing that I think is totally missed, if we go and look at the, um, say, the pink bike huck to flat slow motion videos where they're jumping off a little ramp, landing flat. If you watch these videos, every single bike, every single occurrence, every time the bike lands, the bike chain doesn't go taut and straight. It flaps, it moves around and it flaps. Can a flappy chain transmit tension forces into your cranks and then into your pedals. It can't, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work like that. The science is kind of wrong. The science and all the, all the well, not, maybe, maybe not the science, maybe all the, the calculations that we see all assume a static um, setup. They assume that this is a fixed chain that can't move. You know, it's a, sorry, it's, a, it's a, a, t a chain that can transmit tension. It just isn't the case. This thing is flapping. It's flapping all over the place. Personally, I think what's going on is there is no mechanism for transmitting forces to your feet. The lower chain has got the, the hanger in it, so it can, it can move. The upper chain is flapping about, so it can't transmit forces. But people do think pedal kickback is real, and loads of people think there is. Hey, it's Matt from Cast Labs, and today we're gonna to be looking into pedal kickback. So I've read a bunch of pink bike articles. I remember Gwyn's famous chainless run at Leo Gang in 2015, and I've talked about it with a bunch of my friends, but I still don't know if it actually happens when I'm riding. So I decided to take a kind of different approach, and I'm actually gonna see if I can directly measure pedal kickback on the bike and correlate that with kind of my subjective feedback as a rider. I've been chatting to a bloke called Matt in America who put some telemetry on his bike. So he had an accelerometer by the rear wheel um, and he was recording when he felt 
kickback, what he thought of labeled kickback circumstances were. So if he felt it, he pressed the button on his bars and then he could correlate big movements at the rear wheel to feeling in the pedals, what he thought was pedal kickback in his thing. So people can feel this thing and everybody will tell you they can feel pedal kickback. So they're obviously feeling something, but if there's no mechanism to transmit forces, what are they feeling? And I think what they're feeling is actually the flapping of the chain. So the chain is flapping around, it's moving, and the vibrations of the flapping chain are what you feel in your feet. O-Chain is a good, good example. When I've, I've been running O-Chain on my bike for, I don't know, maybe a year now, and it does feel like it deadens things a little bit, but it deadens things, and that's, that's the point. What it does, this has got some elastomers in it. The elastomers essentially remove the vibrations in the chain or reduce the vibrations in your chain so you don't feel them in your feet. The other evidence I've got really is I ride a lot of single speed. I ride a lot of single speed all the time. Single speed bikes feel so solid. You just don't get chatter in your pedals. And that's because the chain is really tight. It can't, it can't flap about. <laughs> so they just feel solid. So I've chatted to quite a few people about this. This chap, Matt, in America, and he, he's actually going to go away and try and sort of add some you know, more thinking and more proof to my thinking or to my, to my ideas. Um, Seb Stott has, is somebody on Pink Bike who's done some really good articles about pedal kickback and he, he agrees with this idea about chain slap. Um, chat to lots of people, the people at O-Chain, not in as many words, but I'll be careful, well, maybe, maybe I shouldn't say they did, but they kind of suggested it was the same thing. All the downhill bike teams are running O-Chain at the moment because they think it does this deadening. So it's a, it's a, it's a big important subject we totally miss on bikes is high frequency vibration. We're all getting our heads stuck into, oh, we've got to solve pedal kickback. When there's this whole problem of high frequency vibrations, bikes rattle and shake. Why don't we design bikes to, to absorb and absorb those forces? It's, some, it's, it's not even mentioned in any, any kind of bike literature. So I've got O-Chain, that helps reduce vibrations in the chain. The chain, I think it does a really good job. So I'm actually running a damping headset at the moment as well, a Cane Creek, I can't think of what it's called, but a Cane Creek headset that um, has got a little bit of steering damping in it. I'd like to try the um, rotating grips as a company make the grips with elastomers in them. There you go, whatever Jamie just said. So I think there's lots of other ways we can add damping to our frames and it, I think that would make a big difference. I think it's something we need to look at. Go back to this, this all started talking about pedal kickback and I don't think it's real. It's, it's a very complicated subject. It's obviously an effect people could feel, but I think it's chain slap. I think it's flapping chains. I don't think pedal kickback as we think of it is, as forces in the pedals is right, but as flapping chains, I think it is a genuine problem that we can solve. Um, and I think that whole problem of high, high frequency vibrations in bikes and stopping chatter, stopping feeling chatter in your bikes is something we just totally miss and uh, something we need to think about. Obviously a steel bike is a good bike for, for uh, you know, part of the ride feel of, of steel bikes is um, the small diameter tubes so you don't get those vibrations compared to, yeah, you know, I can think of a few large big section alley bikes we used to have that make a right old rattle and you could feel that rattle as you rode and I know you get that on stiff carbon bikes as well so, but why don't we think about this? We need to think about this, but there you go. Anyway, just some thoughts for today.